a very good afternoon to all of you and i welcome all of you in this today's session in biotechnology of fermented food the first lecture on enzymatic processing of fruit juices so processing of fruit juices is not new to the mankind um why the fruit or vegetable juices are um, very famous why because we know that fruit and vegetable are very very important sources of dietary nutrients and the most important one the first very first thing that comes into our mind are fruit and vegetable are rich in vitamins minerals dietary fibers bioactive constituents antioxidants cancer preventive agents and so on and so forth so overall fruit and vegetable because of their bioactive constituents provide a very very uh, numerous uh, and different uh, health promoting uh, effects so not only that for um, uh, the carbohydrate content or the pigment content or special organic acids or citric acid malic acid of uh, uh, fructose content all these you know etc um, constituents are present in the fruits and vegetable and beyond that these are naturally occurring constituents and they provide extensive source of energy and also extensive range of physiological benefits through their antioxidant effect anti allergic effect anti carcinogenic effect not only that anti inflammatory uh, properties and recently especially during this covid 19 pandemic more emphasis is given on some of the pigments or um, constituent providing you know um, uh, immunomodulatory effect so these all properties are nat uh, occurring naturally in these uh, fruits and vegetable so this availability of fruit and vegetable is seasonal and they are not available throughout the uh, geographical extent due to the climatic condition say for example in india now there is a season of hapus or mango or alfalfa mango so this season is only for you know specific period of time and then in this period there will be a huge production but then later on once the season is over there will be no or hapus or the grape season the grapes are available only in some specific season oranges like nagpur oranges are only available during the specific season so the availability of these fruits and vegetable is seasonal and and throughout their geograph uh, geographical extent uh, they, they are not available so to access this nutritional benefit throughout the year all year round the therefore their processing and preservation is very very important it is the requisite it is a prerequisite and because we all know that not only india but the largest fruit and vegetable producing countries like china and india and brazil they have um, fruit and vegetable production uh, in the world they are standing like 1 2 3 so uh, there is also at the same time around 40 to 50% that produce is produced is gone into waste because of variety of reasons but mostly we we are not able to you know process them so and at the same time they have a very very they are all highly perishable why because of the high moisture content the water activity they are rich in nutrient so for we all know that the moment any food constituent or food is rich in nutrient the microorganism will be attracted and since the moisture content of fruit and vegetable is quite high it's almost you know 70 to 80% sometimes watermelon and other fruits have nine more than 90% of their uh, weight uh, is the water uh, so so these are highly perishable uh, commodity with a very short life span although we have at home we keep them in the refrigerator and we try to you know extend this uh, shelf life but it is very very say, uh, essential that we think about uh, a process processing technologies which can preserve them so it is estimated that every year nearly 20 to 50% of the fruit and vegetables are lost especially due to environmental conditions mishandling during transportation and lack of preservation and processing for um, uh, practices so ultimately overall we do not have a good post harvest processing uh, technique so so but at the same time the richness of these nutrients that are present in fruits and vegetables encourages the food biotechnologies the food technologies 
to convert to, to look for the technologies so that we can convert them into various food product and juice is one of the very very famous product uh, which is released across the different you know globe in different countries uh, these juice products are very very famous and this is a type you know typical food items which is commonly produced from uh, fruits and vegetables and nowadays you know once upon a time only uh, fruit based juices were acceptable but nowadays vegetable based uh, 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 juices are also uh, available in the market and they are coming uh, into the like they are available in the uh, market and they are becoming quite famous so it is important uh, not only for human wellness but also from a commercial point of view that um, Uh, these these uh, vegetable and fruit juices needs to be filtered so uh, usually you know i have this second slide so basically you know we will see in detail what the structure of these you know fruits and vegetable to understand to sort out the problem so yes we know that juice needs to be you know preserved like during 1930 the fruits and vegetable juice food industry faced huge difficulties and the huge difficulty was associated with the yield and then there were other problems like sedimentation the acceptability quality was very bad like uh, Uh, there was a lot of separation of the uh, fruit soluble and the water and at the same time the juice after storage was either becoming black in color or it was becoming you know bitter in taste so so it was a very very major challenge that the quality of the yield was not up to the mark and then the yield was also not up to the mark and also uh it, there was a bitterness so final product was not uh, acceptable overall so with the advancement of technologies and then you know the streams like food biotechnology and other uh, streams coming into existence the different food processing technologies came into existence such as you know uh, thermal processing then mechanical processing physico chemical and enzymatic processing they have been developed uh, for the uh, improving the yield like for example extraction yield of these fruit juices have gone very very high also the most widely used currently you know process protocols that are being followed are uh, enzymatic processing and it has become an integral part of the modern juice processing uh industry like fruit and vegetable uh, industry so before we understand what is this um, fruit and vegetable you know uh, juices we must understand what is this fruit uh, on vegetable on the plant tissue uh, made up of so one if we understand the problem at its root level it is very easy for us to address the problem so let us understand how the structure uh, of the fruit look like so basically we all know that the fruit and vegetable comes under the category of plants okay so the structure of plant cells we all know i know that you must have studied during your uh, schooling uh, level that plant cell wall uh, has you know they are built into tissues uh, and itself is a very complex system and uh, Uh, from this figure you, you can say uh, that fruits are composed of basically the parenchyma cells and these are very very simple uh, general purpose plant cells and uh, they have these thin walls which are made up of two layers and these outermost layer that you see i hope you are able to see yeah so if when you look at this um, a uh, structure so this outer cell wall is made up of cellulose microfibrils that are embedded in a matrix of pectin so you see this yellow colored it is a matrix of pectin and then hemicellulose and then comes your proteins also you will wonder that where is the cellulose so there is a cellulose also this is so especially that is seen in the woody tissue and this will this will contain lignin okay so the inner secondary cell wall which is composed of pectin and some lignin and then there is a middle lamella which binds this cell together and is mainly 
of a pectin. So if you see this, this is the middle lamella between the cell is a pectin and this green colored layer is a, a outer primary cell wall with random cellulose microfibrils in the pectin. So if you look at this, the inner secondary cell wall with a regular cellulose microfibrils that are embedded in the pectin cell. So these fruits are basically um, are comprised of parenchyma cells and the general purpose plant cells. Uh, so with these thin walls made up of two layers and the outermost is a primary cell wall, which is made up of these cellulose fibers, microfibrils, which are surrounded by matrix of pectin. So why I'm insisting here to look at the uh, pectin because this pectin is the one who is going to play a very, very important role in the entire quality of the uh, G. So, so this inner or secondary cell wall is similar, but it contains less, uh, less pectin. So it's very important to understand that how does. So you look at this uh, structure of the pectin. How does it look like? So, so basically, um, these uh, fruits are basically overall comprised of parenchyma cells. And these are relatively simple general purpose plant cells with thin cell walls, which are made up of basically two layer. And this outermost uh, layer is also called as a primary cell wall and is made up from cellulose fibers and called microfibrils that are surrounded by a pectin cell wall. So between the cellular bricks is a mortar of pectin. So we saw from this figure also, see this between this mortar of these cell walls, there is a pectin that is present. So complete removal of this binding layer causes the tissue to fall apart. So for example, what you do in during the processing, you rupture this, any fruit you take, whether it is apple or oranges or naranjin, citrus, or any of the fruit that you take, you know, what you do, you basically try to rupture. So because of this rupture uh, and removal of this binding layer, the, the this causes the tissue to fall apart. And uh, you see generally, you know, apple, papaya, mango, some of the fruits, you know, their tissues become softer, either because of the ripening or because of some, you know, uh, metabolic reactions. Also, the microorganism may attack uh, and then they may degrade. So generally, microorganism, they have a lot of enzymes, including these digestive enzymes. So these microorganism, when they attack, the digestive enzymes break down the long chain of pectin. So you see this pectin has the COH, carboxy, uh, methyl uh, groups. So so these COCH3 and carboxy and carboxy methyl group. Okay, so alternate carboxy, carboxy methyl group. So these microbes that produce in digestive enzyme, which break down the, uh, this is a very long chain polymer. So what they do, they break it. So when this molecule is broken down, uh, they becomes into the smaller unit. So then they, there is this, this pectin gives the texture, okay, the firm texture. And you see generally, you know, um, the raw apple or raw banana or raw guava has a very high pectin content in 
fruit and uh, in food processing practical during your undergraduate study you must have seen that while making jam or jelly the guava that are chosen are of you know um, hard or crisp texture of the raw quality why because the raw uh, fruit has a very high pectin content so when the fruit initially uh, harvested it is having a high pectin content but due to ripening there are a lot of metabolical changes uh, occurs and that and production of lot of enzyme result into breakdown of pectin and therefore the fruit and vegetable tissues becomes softer so i am mean, apart from that if there is a microbial attack uh, then this microbes having digestive enzyme will break down the long chain of pectin and then uh, also this cellulose that is present outside say for example you take any example there is a cellulosic coating uh, uh, about the uh, Uh, this uh, inner walls so this cellulose is also susceptible to enzymatic attack to especially in the primary cell wall where it is microfibrils are arranged at a random level uh, or random way rather than the stronger regular pattern that is seen in the secondary cell wall and the degradation of the cell wall which leads to the breakdown of cell wall so uh, overall i uh, again you know if you look at in general what is the percentage of fresh mass of a cell wall so if you take an example of a fruit like a cherry you know that red colored cherry the pectin content of the cherry is 0.5 okay very high pectin content but if you look at the pectin content of mango is very very high it is 1.02 pear 0.42 apple 0.54 and then compared to pectin the hemicellulose content is less and that will vary to uh, fruit to fruit for example apple has a um, high uh, hemicellulose content and so is for pineapple also there is a very high hemicellulose content cellulose content for apple as well as mango is uh, quite high compared to other and then glycoprotein content will vary so this this will give you an idea like how the pectin content uh, varies and uh, if you look at overall you know the structure of a, i am taking here uh, in this today's class i will be discussing about uh, three four enzymes that are generally and more commonly and widely used in fruit juice industry so the top most juice consumed all over the world is apple and the second largest top most juice that is consumed is a uh, orange so i will cover this and then uh, one more example i will take that is naringin and uh, so therefore uh, here you know if you look at the citra uh, citra structure of the fruit uh, citrus fruit you will see that in case of the citrus you have an waxy uh, cuticle that is just above which is orange color and just below the waxy cuticle you will see that white colored you know thing generally we do not consume because that is very very bitter in uh, like um, uh, this just before this uh, white layer there is one skin that is called as a flavido and this flavido contains uh, oil glands and pigments like orange color pigments and we generally we try to you know press it so that you know oil comes out no generally in the orange peel so that is a flavido and just below the flavido you see that there is a albedo that white and this albedo is you know causing a lot of bitterness why how i will be explaining in the upcoming slide and then uh, you see this lamella and then you see this seed at the center and then these are the tissue or the segment which contains you know lot of juice so in case of orange and naringi you will have lot of sacs embedded into this carpel uh, uh, with a lot of juice sacs and then you have to press it okay so that the juice comes out uh, while when you look at the structure of the apple what you see here is uh, apple has uh, these again you know two seeds located at the center and then the vascular bundles in the outer portion of the ovary you see these are the vascular bundles uh, that are just out uh, present at the outer portion of this ovary and then these are the uh, enlarged receptacle like when you see you know apple initially is a very small one and then slowly uh it uh, in, in enlarges or increases into the uh, uh size and then here in these all 
uh, things you will see the juice is uh, present or embedded so just to understand what happens to the pectin and how you know uh, its con uh, its concentration or its quantity get you know changed i would like to tell you what are the various changes that happens during ripening i'm i'm sure during fruit and vegetable processing you must have uh, studied this already but to give uh, just an overall uh, idea uh, let us understand what are the different enzymes that are responsible for causing ripening in the uh, fruits or vegetables we see that in a vegetable you know green vegetables Uh, converted into yellow the chlorophyll gets converted into carotenoid and then tissues become soft like in case of cucumber and then in case of broccoli the the fluorescence that is the flower you know starts uh, you know forming yellow color and um, the methyl leaves or spinach leaves becomes yellow in color and all at the same time in case of fruit generally you see the softening of tissue takes place the most common example that you see is like banana initially it's green and then you know slowly once uh, when the ripening happens the green banana turns into very soft banana so softening of tissue is a very very major uh, change and that is all because of the pectin that is present and the pectin is also called as a intercellular cement intercellular cement so unripe fruit generally as i mentioned before the unripe fruit has a very uh, uh, high pectin uh, because this pectin is bound to cellulose microfibrils in the cell walls and this pectin is initially insoluble and the liquid within the cells remains fluid conferring the rigidity so this pectin remains in in the fluid form okay and that is uh, you see apple which is you know uh, crispy uh, the the juice you know when you take the apple and try to bite it it the juice oozes out so generally you know this raw uh, has this uh, more juice uh, more pectin content and that is why uh, it has a it confers a rigidity to the fruits but during the ripening pectin is altered and is all because of the natural enzymes so these natural enzymes what do they do they act on to the pectin chain as we saw in the previous uh, slide there is a long chain of pectin so these pectin chain or side chains attached to these units are broken down and the pectin becomes you know from insoluble form so initially when in the unripe fruit the un, if i ask you in exam a unripe fruit is uh, more firm in texture uh, than the ripened one which is more softer why to oh, justify what is the reason so the reason is unripe fruit contains pectin that is bound to cellulose microfibrils in the cell wall and this pectin in the raw uh, fruit is in the insoluble form and uh, in the, in the liquid form and within the cell remains in the fluid and that confirms rigidity to the unripe fruit whereas during ripening the enzymes that are naturally present in fruits they act on to this long chain of pectin and causes breakdown of this pectin into a smaller units or smaller chains and therefore because of these smaller units and a smaller chain this pectin from insoluble form gets converted into soluble form so grip on the surrounding cell wall therefore when the pectin molecule is a longer it has a more grip on to the surrounding just now we saw the plant structure you know so it has a very strong grip on to the surrounding you know microfibril or, or structure but the moment it is broken down the smaller units loses their grip on to the surrounding cell wall and therefore the ripened fruit has a softened plant tissue or the plant tissue in case of the ripened fruit are more softer compared to their un, uh, so now you will be wondering like you i have a, another question like is it very easy to take out the juice from the ripened uh, fruit than the unripened fruit suppose you want to go for a juice extraction whether you would choose a fully ripened uh, fruit or unripened fruit you will find that the results are contrastive or they are reverse contrast reverse Surpri surprisingly the truth is reverse 
underripe fruit it is very easy to take out the juice why because the pectin is insoluble and the liquid e there is a more liquid present so so therefore you know the therefore surpri surprisingly this more easy to press the juice from the unripe fruit than the ripe the fruit so this is because the partial breakdown of the insoluble pectin it becomes soluble in water and some of the pectin molecules that are released into the juice and uh, and then they become you know more viscous more difficult to squeeze from the fruit during processing so a uh, color flavor remained within the fruit juices uh, uh, fruit juice is inferior quality and juice is difficult to you know clarify also like under fully ripened fruit you know what happens the fully ripened juice the juice is very difficult to clarify because uh, the pectin molecules have already converted from insoluble to soluble form and when there is a soluble form that soluble form causes you know increases the viscosity and also uh, it is very difficult to clarify the viscous gel in the upcoming slide i will be explaining you know how this pectin forms the gel and the clouds and causes the haziness or cloudiness to the juice so so when you have a juice which is prepared from the ripened fruit the ripened fruit juice would have the pectin molecules that are in the soluble form and the soluble form pectin uh, causes more viscosity and they causes more haziness more cloudiness and it is very be becomes difficult so although you filter it uh, the filtration also there are some suspended pectin particles remains because they are soluble so when you look at this you know overall structure of the pectin you see um, the pectin has a endopolygalacturonases like enzymes that are present naturally or we can you know now we will see how the externally we can target some enzyme to break down this pectin so endopolygalacturonases and pectin lysis they what do they do they break down the bond between the non esterified uh, uh, the non esterified uh, uh, galacturonic acid residue so when you look at this you know structure of uh, uh, this uh, pectin overall so this pectin has a galacturonic acid residue so these are called as a galacturonic acid residue so when you break down you have this pectin molecule which has this galacturonic acid residue and then uh, you know the smaller unit so if you use the pectin lyase this pectin lyase would break down the link between esterified galacturonic acid residues are remained and then you have this coh which is a non esterified galacturonic acid residue which lacks the methoxyl group this doesn't have a methoxyl group see uh, there is a methoxyl group there is a methoxyl some of them have methoxyl group some of them do not have a methoxyl group okay so there is a no methoxyl group there is a no there is a methoxyl group okay so this pectin methyl esterase which splits off this cooch3 group that splits off this methoxyl groups forming methanol ch3oh and low methoxyl pectin okay so you must have heard about low methoxyl pectin and a high methoxyl pectin so it is all because of you know conversion of this pectin using this uh, specific enzymes that could be used if you use exopolygalacturonases so this breaks the links between non esterified galacturonic acid a, a molecule at the non reducing end so one is a reducing end and one other one is a non reducing end of this polygalacturonic acid so oh okay yeah so this was basically my first slide but i uh, it came here so basically you know overall before uh, this uh, human consumption of fruit juices started like before 1930 or so as i said in 1930 uh, the commercial uh, juice uh, uh, 
uh, was started and then uh, because of the health benefits the praise and earlier it was only given to the diseased people okay maybe those who are like a med uh, on medicine or medications only doctors prescription the juice was uh, given so only pressing and filtration as it is was carried out there was no technology development had happened so pressing and filtration and then it was used in commercial wine and juice preparation only during 1930 but later on in 1960 what had happened is the chemical structure of the plant tissue become apparent the biotechnologists chemists and all the scientists discovered the structure of the plant tissue and they realized and they understood the pectin and how you know its methoxy group and then um, galactronic acid residues could cause the haziness or cloudiness in the juice they understood the chemical structure and therefore you know juice extraction from apple from 5 million tons uh, production was started in 1970 using lot of mechanical presses and other you know techniques and then uh, later on from 2020 onwards like we have a uh, novel non thermal technologies and there are so many other technologies that are coming into existence so the first enzyme that is very widely used in the fruit juice industry is pectinase is pectinase enzyme okay so this pectinase enzyme as the name indicates will act on to pectin okay so this is some of the first enzyme that was started uh, its use or started its entry into fruit juice industry so uh, so as i said you know during 1930s commercial wine and juice preparation started and before that uh, only you know simply pressing and filtering using mechanical means that was the only way uh, the juice was obtained and it was used but uh, during 1960 as chemical structure of plant tissues become very apparent uh, scientists discovered that the pectin and its embedded form and then they realized that if we you know do not disturb uh, the entire structure rupture it and then if we carefully address the issue of you know cloudiness because of the pectin it is very easy and then slowly this pectin is uh, started uh, entry into the fruit juice industry in juice extraction and it was uh, for the first time 5 million tons of juice from the apple was successfully extracted and right now also there is a huge consumption of apple like um, as i mentioned before apple is the largest uh, one of the top most juice consumed wide worldwide and widely and the second top most famous ju uh, uh, juice that is consumed worldwide is orange juice and the third one is a grapefruit juice. although it is uh, not so famous in india 450 million liters so this pectinase has been widely used uh, in all these uh, different types of juices uh, whether it is extraction whether it is clarification whether it is cloud prevention whether it is modification of juice for removal of the bitterness for modification for the color or for extraction of the enhanced extraction or enhanced bioactive constituents or enhanced taste and flavor this pectinase is widely uh, used so this uh, table overall gives you an idea about uh, the uh, this uh, so this table indicates the uses of pectinase so clarification of fruit juice uh, is one of the most important function of this pectinase so example you know apple juice and lemon juice um, the depectinized juices can also be concentrated without gelling and developing uh, we will be seeing the detailed mechanism and function of this pectinase enzyme but i would like to give you an overall use of this uh, pectinase enzyme Uh, also enzyme treatment of the pulp soft fruit uh, red grapes as i said you know soft fruit has a more solubilized pectin so in that case you know addition of enzyme would help a lot red grapes citrus apples citrus apples uh, they have uh, these juice embedded into 
uh, these sales, especially for apple, it is very difficult to take out the juice yield. So for the better release of juice and colored material, enzyme treatment of uh, uh, these uh, is very, very important. And also enzyme treatment of pulp of olives, palm fruit, coconut flesh to increase the oil yield. These enzymes uh, have been used like Pectin is, uh, pectin is present in many of the uh, plant uh, tissues. So uh, this has been, you know, explored for variety of uh, uses. So maceration of fruit and vegetable or disintegration uh, by the cell separation. So basically to obtain basis for a thick fruit nectars and baby food, these pectinases could also be used. In liquefaction of fruit and vegetable, some of the fruits, you know, uh, they result into pulp like banana. So you like baking a juice is like so difficult. So only, you know, pulp like papaya is only pulp. Chiku, only pulp. So to obtain products with increased soluble content or soluble solid, like if you want to make chiku and banana juice, you will have to use something which can liquefy and increase the soluble solid content of uh, pectinases and celluloses. They are combined. Special application to citrus fruit, like preparation of clouding agents from citrus peel. Nowadays, cloudy uh, juices are gaining a lot of popularity. So there is also a new trend coming into existence where these cloudy juices would become, you know, very, very important. Cleaning of peels for used uh, to be used in candying and marmalade production, recovery of oil from citrus peel uh, and depectinizing the citrus pulp uh, during washing. Then uh, there are other enzymes also which could be, you know, used along or in combinations. For example, you know, cellulases. So these addition of these celluloses, uh, cellulases uh, during extraction of juices, and uh, especially uh, the juice extraction is carried out at 50 degrees Celsius, which will help in improving the release of pigment from the skin of fruit. And this is particularly useful for um, uh, fruits such as blackcurrants, uh, red grapes, or jamun, say for example, nowadays jamun juice is becoming very famous. So cellulases are sometimes used at the time of initial uh, pectinase addition. Uh, so this will totally liquefy. So for example, you know, if you want to take out the juice from jamun, so if you add cellulose, it will disintegrate uh, and liquefy these plant tissues and then it will become very easy to you know, extract the juice so that the juice can be filtered even pomegranate uh, straight from the pulp without any need for tracing. Then the next enzyme is arabinase. Arabinase, the polysaccharide arabin, uh, basically it is a polymer of pento sugar, uh, that is arabinose, and that causes a lot of haze in the fruit juice. Especially after a weeks, uh, it has been concentrated or praised. So although commercial pectinase preparations often contain these arabinase, right now there are commercial, uh, 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 these in the, uh, industries are making commercial enzyme formulations in which this arabinase is also uh, present. So these commercial pectinase preparation often contain these arabinase. Uh, certain fruits like pears are rich in arabin and this definitely for pear, uh, this uh, requires the addition of the extra arabinase uh, because this has a lot of uh, pento sugar that is arabinose. Uh, then glucose oxidase is another enzyme that is also quite uh, widely uh, used and uh, this glucose oxidase catalyzes the breakdown of uh, glucose and this reaction uses molecular oxygen and generates hydrogen peroxide. We all know that this glucose oxidase Oxidase is widely used because of you know its catalysis or the it catalyzes the breakdown of glucose and uh, glucose oxidase like when coupled with the catalase uh, to remove the hydrogen peroxide and it is used to to remove the oxygen from the air above the bottled drinks also during egg uh, you know preservation this is very widely used reducing non enzymatic browning due to oxidation. Uh, so which might otherwise occur. So, so this glucose oxidase is very uh, widely used. So apple juice, uh, uh, so now I'm going to take uh, the first case study about apple juice production and how it is produced. 
and in the apple juice production how the enzymes are being utilized or how the enzymes are being used where why their mechanism of action and all about enzymes so apple juice is generally you know if you see and go to the market you will see variety of apples like uh, washington apples then delicious apple or uh, then kashmiri apple like if you go and sometimes if you have visited kashmir you will find even you know uh, for 10 Twenty different types of you know apples like green apple, red apple, bright red colored apple, yellow apple, so many varieties. So apple juice is also can be prepared from several types of apple. So and then therefore you know you have the the moment you have differences in the variety of apple, you will find that the differences in the juices also that are obtained like a hazy. a uh, juice unfiltered juice unclarified juice clear a uh, juice or uh, clear filtered juice amber colored juice transparent juice and so on and so forth so these are overall uh, the steps uh, that are used for the production of apple juice in any uh, industry so the most importantly you know these are the steps which can be used after washing and starting so so initially we all know that the apples are first washed with the water and then they are sorted and then this is the crushing mill so usually they are added into the crushing mill to uh, crush it and then they are uh, put into the oxidation tank because we know that uh, these apple has lot of polyphenol as well as polyphenol oxidizes enzyme uh, and they will immediately act so this helps a lot uh and then uh, we will see these uh, steps uh, in detail so when and then after this uh, juice is exposed and uh, passed to the heat exchanger wherein it is heated in such a way that uh, it inactivates uh, some of the enzymes and uh, further this heat treated juice is uh, passed into a tank it is also called as a holding tank and in this holding tank the pectinase treatment is being uh, given so the amount of pectinase is decided on variety of factor the environmental condition the variety of apple that is being used the amount of the activity of the original enzyme unit activity of the enzyme all that matters okay so and in during this you know um, then once you hold the tank by uh, for occurring the treatment of pectinase onto the pectin uh, you crushed the crushed mass is then pressed and then uh, you remove the, the mass uh, because here you know the pectinase will act on to the mass and the cells and it will break down this integrate so that you know it liquefies and then uh, the juice is pressed the pomace and mass is removed and then uh, further to get the clarified juice it is centrifuged and then uh, to recover the aroma uh, the it is passed through aroma recovery plant and then further uh, it is the juice is passed to the clarification tank so in the clarification tank as the name itself indicate further uh, pectinases are added and amylases are added amylases will you know uh, uh, cause or increase the sweetness and then uh, this is again one more time filtered and centrifuged centrifuged and then filtered to make it more clear and transparent and then uh, to uh, increase the storage and transportation cost uh, this is concentrated so that you know the moisture is evaporated Uh, uh so that you know in a less quantity less uh, quantity you can transport more and the cost also goes down the shelf life also increases uh, uh and then once this is concentrated it is stored uh, packed and uh, sold it into the packet so let us see one by one uh, each step in detail and what happens during uh, that step so apples are basically a pre press treatment so pre press treatment before pressing the apples there is a treatment called as a pre press treatment so basically apples are uh, washed they are sorted they culled fruits and damaged fruits are removed uh, and then they straight away crushed into the meal so peels and cores from apple slices may also be used everything is being used nothing is you know 
thrown out. So this apple pulp that is obtained into the crush mill is stirred into a holding tank for for 15 to 20 minutes, and um, and then uh, this step uh, is followed so that the enzyme inhibitors like polyphenols are oxidized by naturally occurring polyphenol oxidase into the fruit. You see this step uh, is called as oxidation tank. So we know that these polyphenols are uh, needs to be you know uh, acted upon by the polyphenol oxidase. So the pulp is heated to an appropriate temperature uh, before uh, the enzyme treatment. Uh, so here the temperature uh, is uh, 30 degrees Celsius. This is called as an optimal temperature. Uh, generally, for different fruits, the temperature would vary. For example, 30 degrees Celsius is the optimal temperature for apple. Uh, stone fruit and berries uh, need a higher temperature because they have a different structure like 50 degrees Celsius. And uh, for example, other fruits uh, require 60 to 65 uh, temperature if pectinase is not used, in which case, you know, the juice is liberated by action of plasmolysis of the plant cells. Uh, so this is uh, called as a pre-press treatment. Uh, this is a treatment with pectinase. Uh, take, takes anything uh, from around 15 to four, two to three hours, depending upon the exact nature of the enzyme, its unit activity, how much is being used, variety of apple and all that factor. And also the reaction temperature, whether you are processing it at a lower temperature, or a higher temperature, whether it is a delicious uh, Washington apple or green apple, unripened apple or slightly ripened apple, so all that, you know, uh, so generally, you know, golden delicious apples are very difficult to break down. So during this incubation period, the pectinases, what they do, they degrade the soluble pectin in the pulp and making the juice flow more freely. So in the figure, I, I will be showing it in the next figure also. So basically, these enzymes will act upon to the pectin molecule and it will break down the insoluble pectin, which hampers the juice extraction in two ways. So basically, the, there is a, in the unripened fruit that are being chosen, there is a lot of uh, pectin, which is, you know, insoluble pectin. So if they are left, uh, uh, the slimy pectin particles become saturated uh, within the juice, uh, which is then becomes very difficult to, to extract from the pulp. And also, they block the drainage channel in the pulp uh, through which the juice must drain. Otherwise, you know, it will block it and then uh, it will be very difficult. The enzyme treatment, basically, what do that uh, enzyme do? Is considered to be very, very complete once the viscosity of the juice has returned to its original level or less. So the, the juice from viscous level to come to a thinner viscosity. So basically, during this holding period, the degradation of insoluble pectin causes and the juice is, uh, you know, um, uh, to thicken at the start, okay? So it is important that the pulp is not broken down too much as it would then difficult to become very, very, uh, pressing becomes very difficult. So you must have seen in the steps that, you know, we are just holding it, allowing the pectin, pectinase to act upon pectin and then you carry out the pressing. So pressing is basically done using continuous filters or a low rotary presses. And nowadays there are advanced machines and equipments are available. So juice yields may be increased by up to 20%. Depending upon the age and variety of apple, use of peroxidation enzyme uh, treatment is very, very effective with the mature apple and those from the cold storage. So depending upon the age and variety of apple, a lot of these factors, you know, the yield will vary. Uh, fresh and early season apple, they do not give much yield, but uh, there is also, it is called as a maturity indices. So you, uh, one need to follow the maturity indices to get the highest yield. And then the next step that is there is a clarification. So if a cloudy product is required, the juice is pasteurized immediately after pressing to denature any residual enzyme is there. 
okay so centrifugation then removes the large pieces of debris leaving the most of these small particles in the suspension and for clear juice suspended particles have to be removed uh, generally filtration does not remove all uh, some soluble pectin remains into the juice and it is soluble pectin remains into the juice it makes it more viscous and they, if it it becomes more viscous it becomes very difficult uh, Uh, to do the filtration so therefore treatment of the juices with the pectinase is one of the most widely accepted um, uh, methodology or uh, protocol so what is the effect of depectinization depectinization what happens now during the uh, depectinization so if you look at this picture so generally you know in the juice you have soluble protein you have sugars then you have this pectin so so generally what happens you know uh, this cloud particles are uh, uh, there like uh, cloud particles are formed and then these cloud particles comes together and they form the clumped cloud particles so how does this cloud particles forms or why these cloud formation in some of the juices take place so it is because of the depectinization okay effect of depectinization so basically depectinization has a uh, uh two effects so basically this depectinization is a natural phenomena uh, it results into degradation of viscous soluble pectin and uh, because of the uh, degradation of this soluble protein it causes aggregation of the cloud particles okay and how this aggregation of these cloud particles happens so we know that pectin is there in the fruit okay so this pectin forms a protective coat around the protein in the suspension so as i mentioned in the fruit juice there is a protein uh, so this pectin that forms a very protective coat around this protein into the suspension and this happens at a particular ph we know that you know apple or oranges they have certain specific ph so so apple has a ph of 3.5 okay so at this lower ph pectin molecules uh, generally in acidic environment carry the negative charge so you see this negative charge and this causes this negative this is because of the ph so in acidic environment usually the pectin carries a negative charge and this causes them to repel one another so they are you know repelling each other so the pectin is what they do the pectin is enzyme degrade this pectin and exposes the part of the positively charged protein beneath uh, you know uh, exposes the part of the positively uh, charged protein beneath this uh, electrostatic repulsion between cloud particles and therefore it is reduced so that they clump together so you see this positive 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 so this pectin is basically it is degrading this pectin and then exposing the part of this positively charged protein beneath and the electrostatic repulsion between the cloud particle is reduced so that they clump uh, together okay so therefore you see here the positive negative positive negative so this is like protein so this is positive negative Uh, this is again positive negative so this larger particle eventually settle out but to improve the process uh, there are flocculating agents like pinnings they are called as pinnings are added like gelatin or tannin or bentonite tannin is naturally present or sometimes this bentonite or the clay uh, is used so this pinning agent what do they do they adsorb the enzyme on to their surface and therefore it is very very important not to add them before the enzyme has done its job because then what will happen all the enzyme will be adsorbed on to the surface so once the treatment is done then only we can add it so the, but at the same time if in the fruit juices yeast and other microbes 
uh, if it is might have contaminated to the dews, it also precipitates the uh, precipitated by finding finnings. Okay, so this uh, clay is also useful in precipitating uh, the yeast and other microbes, and therefore the clear juice is thus obtained. And and then uh, further there is a centrifugation and a filtration which gives the more uh, uh, filtered uh, juice. And then the next problem is about starch phase. 